What's going on, everybody? This is KD for the Wealth Wells. Today is 12 4 2022. We are going to go over our weekly prep for the week. We're going to discuss key levels, market moving events, areas of interest, and what we need to watch for this week's price action for the killer moves. If you've noticed in all of my weekly preps, I give you the nitty gritty on what uh, we can look forward to. I don't review a bunch of charts and try to put together a bunch of lagging indicators or patterns. We review the actual market data, actual levels to know when to get involved. Now, if you watched the if you watched any of the trades from last week, then you know, or I'm sorry, if you watched any of the um, uh, uh, our, our market preps from last week, then you know that uh, last week I said that we would look for, we should look for a, a, um, a rally, right? A year in rally that still, I believe we'll still get more of that, but we did see some of that rally start this week. So um, let's talk about last week a little bit. And then we'll talk about what we can look forward to this week uh, and, um, you know, kind of what I expect to see, what I'd like to see in the market, right? No bias, just a uh, just a thesis that we'll, we'll put together. All right. And so um, let's go. All right. So 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 last week on Monday, the markets really were pinned up to that 4,100 or 4,000 area, sorry, on SPX. And 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 the corresponding levels on the futures market opened up there, sold off to 3960, right? Where we saw some chipping around. Really, the markets was wound up very tight up into Jerome Powell, you know, making his announcements, right? Um, you know, and so and we saw that reflected in IV, we saw that it reflected in the options chain as well. Okay. So on Wednesday, the data pointed that and the Fed's comments, right, said that the strong directional move into the FOMC meeting um, coming up into 12, 16, OPEX there, um, we would still be pinned around that 4,100. And, you know, because Jerome Powell signaled that uh, the Fed would eventually slow the pace of interest rate increases, well, guess what? We saw a sharp move and, um, you know, we saw the market rally and continue to move up. Uh, Thursday, we were chipping around a little bit and then we continued in that, in that uh, action on Friday. So really, um, you know, as it came up to 4,100 around or, or, or not actually touching it, but just coming pretty close to it, you can clearly see here, 4,100 here, um, Thursday, see how, uh, you know, really we hit a basically a, a call ceiling or a call wall here, this thing ricocheted up there. And then that was our peak area. So clearly there's some interest sitting right here. You can check flow data, check the tape or what have you. You can clearly say there's some interest around there. And then the market began to sell off. Of course, we uh, we got some uh, poor jobs report or, or rather uh, our, our um, employment Friday right report came out. But um, well, it wasn't poor. It was just uh, from, from a market perspective, wasn't favorable. Obviously, we know with the strong jobs market, we know what Jerome Powell has stated he's going to continue to do. So, you know, we're closely watching that uh, report, but the market did rebound here. It clearly held at 4017 on the futures and then made its way all the way back to the opening range and pre-market data there um, on the market, uh, you know, in the futures market before the uh, market opened up that day. So uh, we're chipping around that 4070, 4070. Area of liquidity is sitting there. As the markets have opened already for futures, they're still chipping around there. So our target for the week, there, there is no major, major, um, if you will, um, movement or major uh, catalyst right now because of, we've already gotten the report from the Fed on what's going on. We'll talk about some other market moving data that could push it. We look at the bond market as well. But, uh, you know, Powell really provided some optimism on Wednesday by signaling that the, the, the central bank would slow the pace of interest rates, right, of the increases. So, that made SPX and the futures market, all of it overall rally about 3.1%. Okay. So if you if you know anything about me, you know I don't use lagging indicators to trade, but I do use lagging indicators to trade against retail traders and to get an idea of what they're going to do. Right. So I don't have them on my screen for day trading, but I'm going to show you a little tip here that I use. All right. Let's go over to the SPX. All right, I'll look at the SPX here. We'll go to SPX on the daily. And we'll we'll put a moving average up here. We'll put the 200 up here on the daily. All right. We'll take off 
um, we'll take off of the volume profile for a moment, okay? And we'll just get an idea of what signaled retail buying, right? Now, here's a little trick, all right? I don't, let me be clear, everyone knows this. And if you've taken any of my trainings, especially if you get to training four and 4.5, this is advanced strategies. This is where we talk about, you know, when and how I look at these lagging indicators and how I can use them for or against the retail trader, right? And, and that's the same thing Wall Street is doing. Let's be clear. That's the same thing Wall Street is doing. So if you are engaged in the market and you're tied to these lagging indicators, just know that Wall Street is looking to use them against you and they're taking a lot of money. Now, I know, I know some some way you you think that you're 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 different. You're special. I get it. I get it. OK, not going to we, we can be friends. We're not going to pick fights with you about these indicators. So many people I get so many messages on YouTube and these other places. It's like, geez, did you create the, the thing? But anyway, I digress. Wall Street is looking at when this indicator is breached, the amount of market participation, then they're going to use that against the retail trader. And they're going to see if they can also use it, you know, in addition to, to, to being further catalysts for their move. Okay. So obviously SPX 200, uh, come Wednesday, we break through it. We hold, we chip around you and looking at this behavior, you, you, you can tell immediately, as soon as we come through that 200, you knew Thursday was going to be a very tight day. And then what would the market be looking for? A hold at that at that area there. Doesn't mean I'm going to trade off of that. All I'm looking for is where retail traders are going to get engaged. You can, you know, you can write some calls, you can write some positions there, you could do whatever you want, you can, you know, spreads, whatever you want, based on this data right here. Okay. Now, that being said, let's go back over to the futures. All right. Let's go down the 15 minute real quick here. And let's go over to the futures again. Okay. So looking at the futures here, with this market being a very news-driven, bond-driven, geopolitical news-driven market, um, anything, any bad or any good news can, can bring volatility into the market, and we like that. So back here, Jerome Powell, Thursday, chipping around, Friday, employment, we hold 4070, or 4017, sorry, and we're back to 4, uh, 4070, and then likely we want to come back up and retest 4100. So what do I look for this week? Just looking at the data so far, I would like to see us hold these areas. This would signal that there is still a little bit of strength in the market and that that uh, year end rally that I am expecting will persist. We've already, it's already started, will persist. Now, as strange as it may sound, that year end rally is, uh, you know, is, is typical, but um, because of the geopolitical news and things happening in the market, you you in the inflation and all, you wouldn't really expect it. But because of Jerome Powell's dovish comments, then I expect us to continue to move. Now, once we get over this 4,100 hump around this area right here, uh, the next two targets that I'm going to be looking for to the upside, obviously 4,137, 4,150. And we'll take it from there. We'll go, we'll go and hit our targets as we go. Obviously, this isn't all the levels here. But that's kind of what I'm looking for on um, the futures market there. Now, let's talk about market moving data, all right? As normal, for those of you who don't know, you can certainly click the link uh, somewhere attached to this video and you can come into the Discord. As long as you abide by the rules, then you can crush it with the rest of us every single day. Here's my schedule here, Monday and Friday, top of the day, uh, I crush it. Period. You want to see how good a guy is or a girl is? You want to see how good somebody is in trading? Come into Discord. You can see how good I am or not. You can see all of the things you want. You don't even have to, you know, you don't have to believe any of the YouTube stuff. You can just come right in here, right? As long as you abide by the rules, you're good. I would spend some time reading the testimony. Real people. I can't make this stuff up. Real people, real profits, crushing this thing every single day. That's what I like to see. Then book some training, all right? Just take the training. You'll thank me later. And then I'll be in here in the spy on the options room crushing this thing every single week. All right. So so let's go over to the um, let's go over to the let's see here. I think it's a general channel here. Let's take a look at the week. All right. This is what we have to look forward to. So Monday. PMI composite 945 factory orders and ism coming out at 10 o'clock. Tuesday and Wednesday, we've got trade goods and services numbers coming out at 830. 
And then we've got, uh, of course, our petrol report at 1030 on Wednesday, productivity and cost 830 Thursday, uh, jobless claims week over week, 830 and PPI final. And of course, consumer sentiment. So this, this week, the normal, the usual suspects, the consumer sentiment and P PMI there, PPI final demand and adjustments ism, our services index there, that will introduce a certain amount of volatility into the market. But there, I don't expect more than the usual behavior this week, right? Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary that's already, unless we get some geopolitical news. So let's be clear here. Unless we get something that moves the market abnormally, I don't expect uh, much happening. Now, as it stands right now, we don't have too many Fed members speaking. We've got the FOMC meeting jumping off uh, on the 14th of the month. And then Feds, for the most part, are, will be on hiatus from speaking. And then, of course, we go into the holiday season. So we are primed to have a nice little rally um, and for the rally to continue. Let me just say that for it to continue, uh, Jerome Powell's comments would be the catalyst for that. So with that being said, how about we go over to SPY? We take a look at it. All right, let's take a look at SPY. Okay, so we tested 407. Of course, this is in all the levels. So let's be clear. The levels are posted in the Killer Wells private channel. These private channels right here where I post um, extra information, audio training. We trade the futures. We trade stocks. We trade swing trades in there. Now that we're moving, uh, swing trades will pick back up. And then we do trade discussions, trade plans, trade breakdowns, all that cool stuff to get people on the right track. And then my call outs are here. When I'm not in the main channel, I'm in the Killer Wells channel. All right. So to the upside, looking for a retest. I want to see how the futures market opens up. Okay. I will uh, allow the overnight session to shake out. I will trade the futures tonight. I'll put some call outs in there as well. Um, you know, after hours here in, in the, in the um, if there's supporting volume in the move there, I'll be looking for a uh, move there on the futures. But I'm really looking for a retest of um, Friday's high here. And if we break that, then ultimately we want to come up to 410.51. That's where we want to go. Beyond that, the levels in between there. And as we go beyond that, then um, those will be posted in the private channel. And that is our week there. Now, the last part of our week that we need to talk about, I try to get through this in about 15 minutes. I'm almost out of time, is earnings. Of course, all you meme stocks and all you, you know, lovers, there's game stock. Okay, all right. Uh, there's not a lot here that I'm watching aside from Costco. I'll be watching that. Sienna, I'll be watching that. But there's not a lot here that I'm watching that's uh, going to Im impact the market too much. So if you are taking an earnings play, you know, you're gambling, but you should definitely do your due diligence and understand. Uh, but it will be appropriate to, for you to come into the, some of these after mark, um, after they, they report toll brothers. Keep in mind, that's di directly impacted by the real estate market. So you already know what the real estate numbers are so far. So do your due diligence on that. But um, that's what we're looking for. So if we go back over to the futures. All right. All right. We're holding at 4070. And I'm looking for, at some point, I believe we're going to just, you know, range in this area right here. Um, I want to see how the volume and strength does over the uh, overnight session here in foreign markets. But uh, we'll be looking for that. Um, you know, chips are, are in the news and, you know, making some noise. So we'll be watching that. Disney's in the news making some noise as well. We watching, that. of course, oil is a hot topic. Okay. So, you know, once we kind of get a good idea of what's happening there, we'll be watching foreign stocks as well to see um, how foreign markets do overnight. Okay. That's our morning prep. You've got our key level. I'm sorry. That's our, our, our market prep. You've got our key levels. Uh, you've got the market moving events. Uh, you know the targets and areas that we're watching and you know what could be moving the market and you're ready to trade. Everything else uh, will firm up in the morning in our uh, morning prep to crush this thing. So I will be live back at it, crushing this thing in the spy only options room right here, right? Right there at 8.50 to crush this thing. All right, call outs and all that cool stuff for the morning session. So if you want to learn how to trade the right way, I encourage you to get some training. I don't use lagging indicators. Number one. So don't come into the Discord talking that lagging indicator talk. There's a million Discords that you can go to to do that stuff. And, and I don't pattern trade. But if you want to learn how to trade the right way, 
the same way Wall Street trades, the same way effective traders trade, then you can come in and get some training and learn how to get crushed this thing every single day. Okay, I'll stick around with you guys for a little bit. My time is up. I try to keep these to 15 minutes. Um, in the future, I'm going to be talking about some uh, hedge positions. We're going to be talking about some flow algo. We're going to be talking about uh, how I know where pools of liquidity are. I'll be releasing some of that information inside of the um, inside of these uh, these um, um, our weekly preps. And I'm going to also uh, start giving you guys some more information and drilling a little deeper on some of the market moving data. I find that a lot of traders understand um, the name or they understand, okay, what's coming up, but they don't understand the impact it may have on the market. So I'm going to be talking about those, putting a series of uh, trainings together for you guys. It'll be made available to everyone. Um, and I'll start a couple of videos this week. Okay. I'll take a couple questions there in the spy only options room if you have some. Otherwise, I'll stop the video right here, guys, and I'll see you guys bright and early in the morning to crush this thing and um, come out the week green. Say it with me. I am coming out of the week green.